Today is the 10th of September 2019, which marks this year's World Suicide Prevention Day, and I thought I would share the five things that I wish I had known when I was suffering severely from depression from 2014 to 2016. Ultimately, I attempted suicide myself, and I know that had I acknowledged one, even one of these five things in the run-up to that suicide attempt, I would have been much better off. I'm not saying that this is a one-size-fits-all approach and that this is the solution to depression as it's a very complex and individualistic illness. But I'm just hoping that by sharing my experience and my learnings from it, it might be able to benefit someone else and stop them going through the same experience. Number one, focus on how things are rather than how you think they should be. So I fell massively into this trap in that I was young, I was only 18, 19, but I had this vision, this expectation of the direction in which my life should be going, which meant that any deviation from that meant that I felt like I was failing, I felt like I was off course, I felt like I wasn't being true to myself, and it hit me in such a way mentally that this feeling of failure was just so overwhelming. But now, day to day, I've acknowledged that you can control the controllables and each day is very different. You need to take each day as it comes and work with the reality with which you are facing at the time. If something's changed and you can't go down the pathway that you're expecting to, then you need to adapt, you need to adjust so that you can try and put yourself back on track. But just because something's different doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you need to overcome it in a new way. Number two, depression can affect us physically. So. I'm going to hold my hands up and admit that I did not even believe in the notion of depression or mental illness until it affected me personally. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat properly, I was getting split in half at the gym by weights that I should be able to do with my eyes closed, and it terrified me, physically terrified me, and ultimately led me down the slippery slope towards attempting suicide myself. I was one of the people that was perpetuating the stigma against men and I was perpetuating it against myself by not believing in the situation that I was currently facing. And what this goes to show is simply how powerful and severe mental illness can be when your mind manifests itself into your body to the point where, for me, it led to me not wanting to exist anymore. There are small, simple, actionable steps that we can take day by day to help prevent others from getting to that stage, to help prevent us getting to that stage, and ultimately we should not be dangerous to ourselves. Number three, it is okay to talk. My biggest downfall was my utter resilience to saying anything to anyone out of my fear that it would make me weak, vulnerable, exposed, let down people's expectations of me, let down my own expectations of myself. But in reality, we don't give people enough credit for how valuable they can be and how much they will listen in a time of crisis. If you don't feel like you have people that you can lie on, there are services out there that can help you. Samaritans Calm both have fantastic hotlines to speak to. And sometimes those few words getting it out in the open can be all that you need to be able to take that weight off your shoulders. What I've learned having come out the other side of my experience is that a culture of openness and being honest with who I am, how I'm feeling at all times is the best coping mechanism that I have to be able to get through my day to day life. That's what I'd recommend to anyone and everyone. It's not the be-all and end-all, but it is definitely a starting point. Number four, you are not alone. One of the reasons that I was so reluctant to speak to anyone whilst I was suffering was down to the fact that I felt so isolated and that my situation was so unique that no one would have anything to compare it to and therefore wouldn't be able to help. When in reality, one in four of us suffers from a common mental health problem every single year. You're not crazy, you're not broken for feeling isolated, depressed or lost. You're simply another human being whose deeper needs aren't being fulfilled. But the challenge lies in the fact that a lot of us might not know what those deeper needs are yet. I certainly didn't. And it's through the practical love and support, through a culture of openness and through talking about the things that challenge us day to day, the things that make us happy day to day, and really understanding ourselves from the bottom up, we can help figure out what those deeper needs are so that we can feel more fulfilled, we can feel more happy, and we can take comfort in the fact that everybody suffers. Everybody goes through moments of ups and downs, but we're all in this together, and through talking about it, we can all get through it. Number five, no one feeling lasts forever. And this is something that I've taken from my training as well as my dips in and out of depression following my most severe experience in 2014 to 2016. So I am 
so grateful I'm still here and that the feeling that ultimately led me to decide to take my own life has now passed, which means that in my day to day life now, when I have terrible days, when I have ups, when I have downs, I can always take comfort in the fact that it will subside, this experience will pass. And I'm not saying that if you're feeling depressed, if you're suffering from mental illness, that you should just sit there and let it pass. I'm saying that you can take comfort in the fact that it can pass and there are small, actionable steps that we can take to help alleviate the pain. It may feel at times like the pain is never going to go away, but it is the conversations that we have and the culture of openness that we can instill in ourselves that will really help us get through it and find that light at the end of the tunnel. I say again, depression is an incredibly complex and individual illness that manifests itself in many different ways. And I'm not claiming that those five things are the be all and end all, the one size fits all solution to depression for everyone anywhere. I'm simply saying that had someone shared those five things with me when I was at my worst, I might have been able to take some small actionable steps from them to prevent me from getting to the stage that I did. So I'm hoping that by drawing on my own experiences and sharing with you the learnings from them, that there might be some things that you can take and implement into your day to day lives. And if that is the case, I will be over the moon and can count this as a roaring success. But change does need to happen because last year 6,859 lives were lost to suicide in the UK and Republic of Ireland, which is just over 600 more than the previous year. My challenge to you is simply to go out there and have conversations about mental health, about depression, about anxiety, about suicide prevention where you otherwise might not have done. Talk more, listen more and engage in more conversation around the topics that we find uncomfortable to talk about. I very much hope there's something that you can take away from this video and if that is the case please make sure you share it with someone that you might think it can do the same for and that you've subscribed below as I do hope to do much more mental health content in the run up to my Movember challenges. So thanks very much for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.